Greetings and salutations. This is Abe Abdelhadi with The Bitter Truth, where we may not have all the answers, but we're going to ask an awful lot of questions. You can also become a bitter pill or a spoonful of sugar by visiting patreon.com <laughs> forward slash The Bitter Truth, where we can give you some fabulous swag to make your life better because everybody likes swag. Uh, today, we're doing part two of um, my interview with uh, Shanna Hogan. She is a best selling author and journalist. She's uh, among her books are the Stranger She Loved, and Picture Perfect, the Jody Arias story. If you listen to part one, we've been talking about that a little bit. And uh, she's been an award-winning journalist and a regular television commentator on various and sundry uh, crime cases. Uh, Shanna, how the heck are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again. Hey, not a problem. Um, yeah, so when, when we left off, we were kind of getting into some, you know, the thick of some stuff. Um, and, and, you know, and, and honestly, you know, we're, you, you've written other things and and all of that, but we're probably going to be talking about this Jody business. Um, but I really appreciate you coming on and and uh, and being a decent person about it. Um, you well, know, I, th- I I appreciate that. Uh, I I really really do um, appreciate your perspective on it because so many people jumped on the exploitive train and it was you know they forgot that a person lost their lives and um, you never seem to forget about that and and you know, as a journalist, I, you know, I have to, I have to cover some gruesome things, but I try to never, ever forget about that either. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I mean, um, I mean, fuck the first trial was, I think seven years ago now. And mm-hmm. The second one was January. I testified in January 2013. 15. Yeah. And then, and then the penalty phase, I testified in 15, January 15. Um, yeah, I think, I think the reason why I'm like, I'm cool with it now, I think, um, you know, there's no real big epiphany or anything. I mean, like I, I mean, I remember about a couple years, a few years back, you know, um, cause I played in bands back in the day. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I used to only ever talk about the three bands I was in, you know, but mm-hmm. really I was in five and I never talked about the other two because mm-hmm. they were like born again, Christian rock bands. Right. <laughs> cause I came up religious. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I was I was probably 51 years old where I was finally comfortable about talking about being in a couple of Christian bands. And, you know, because by the time I was like 23, 22 years old, I was out of it. You know, I was mm-hmm. done and just had my fill and I was done. And then I got into regular bands and just moved on with my life. <clears throat> and I was done with religion. And I think with this, it, it's kind of in that same thing where, um, uh, you know, like this show, this episode, you know, the last one, I don't think it's going to get, you know, any big traction more than my show with, you know, the socialist talking about capitalism last week. I mean, it's just the show people listen to it or they don't. I think at the mm-hmm. time I was just super concerned about, um, like you said, the guy got murdered and I didn't see any real value past. Like I never, when I was doing stand-up comedy, I did stand-up comedy almost a decade kind of at the tail end of it when this Jody thing happened, I never had a single joke about that. I never told a promoter, Hey, push me. I'm the guy that was on HLN or whatever. I never told uh, the other comedians Uh, once in a while I'd get recognized and I would just sort of brush it off and go, yeah, that's not good dinner conversation, man. That's the thing. If if you're my friend, I'll talk to you about it, but Mm -hmm. let's just talk about, you know, Bill Hicks. And I was just like, I don't want to hear about it. (laughs) Um, and then, and then if, you know, if, uh, um, I was in a business meeting once in a while that happened, you know, that I got, that somebody recognized it cause they wow. watched that, they watched that shit. It was, it was a once in a while thing, you know, it wasn't like the Beatles. So it was, and plus I only ever did HLN. I didn't go on all these other shows, which was mm-hmm. the other thing. A lot of these guys were assholes. And, and I know you got courted too for them. They, they, went oh, after you. they're like, they're, you're like a chick at the prom with a bad reputation of these people. <laughs> like seriously, like these yeah. people are cocksuckers. It's like, and, and I had a lot of associates that I won't say friends that just mm-hmm. ran to everyone with a camera, mm-hmm. you know, telling their version of it. And some of these guys, Travis flat out hated, right. And <laughs> like flat out hated. And, and I know he didn't like me. It wasn't a big deal. That's fine. That wasn't the point where they're not, he liked me. The point was, is did she do it? Is she this little innocent school marm that she's kind of, now she's dyed her hair Brown and wearing glasses. Now, he defiled me and beep, 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 beep. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, he didn't. No, he didn't. You know, it's like, no, he didn't. You're a goer. As, mm-hmm. as the Monty Python boys like to say, you're a goer. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it was just like, and so now, like five, seven years later, <clears throat> um, I mean, I care because I still care what happens to his family. 
you know, but mm-hmm. as far as like just talking about it, give me some insight about it. I mean, the, 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 the thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, because you, you kind of live in that world, you live in that true crime business. And I, I never understood it. I never understood the fascination with it. Like, like I knew who Casey Anthony was. I'm not 12. Yeah. You know, cause you see on the news, a couple shots here and there, you're at a bar, you're at home in between games or something and you're watching. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Oh, she got off. Okay. Whatever. And then that's it. But excuse me, there's actual, there's an actual fan base for this kind of thing. Uh, and my husband will be the first person to tell you he thinks it's the weirdest thing in the world that I have fans that actually read my books. And yeah. <laughs> uh, he thinks it's just it, bizarre. And to a certain extent, I, you know, I will admit it's bizarre. Um, but I, uh, the, the closest I've come to kind of figuring it out is that for one reason, it appeals more to females than men, uh, because we like to hear, I gossip, I guess. Like we like to hear like what happens with other people in the world. And also when we, you know, educate ourselves more, we become safer about things. Um, and but really, so, but, but, but is it really about education or is it just pure all interest? And I'm not a prude. I think it's voyeurism. I think there's a ton of voyeurism yeah. about it. And, um, you know, like, look at like what the most depraved person did. Um, you know, look how this devolved and I'm not even into serial killers. I won't write a serial killer book because I just think it's just pure, just disgusting, you know, killing, uh, and you know, rape. There's usually a very sexual assault element. Um, but I, I don't know why, but for, from a psychological point of view, I've always kind of found it fascinating how a relationship with two people can go from love to hate to murder to that extreme. And, um, and so I kind of just like, um, you know, like look into those things like it, from that point of view. I don't know. I, I, I've been asked the question a million times. I really don't know what the fascination was, but I, I can tell you that I was fascinated with it too, before I started writing about it. Um, you know, like the things that are happening in our own backyard. Uh, and I've gotten to a point now where I've turned off every single one of my news feeds. Cause I don't actually want to hear about it right now. Right. Um, and, uh, and you know, the, it, it becomes a point of too much. Right. So, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know that's a healthy thing to even be really interested in, but I can tell you that the the books that are out there and the following that's out there, um, they, uh, you know, they're very um, big kind of cheerleaders to their, to the authors who write these books in a really weird way. And, um, and the only thing I will say that like, uh, that I set out to do with my books was to, to tell the truth and to write it well that I wanted to be a good writer and I wanted to write these stories. Well, I don't know that I'll write true crime for the rest of my life. I probably won't. Um, but I wanted to be a good writer and I wanted to tell, uh, the truth about these stories and the value I found about them was the victims part of it because they, once you're, you know, you're murdered, you have been robbed of the chance to tell your own life story, sure. the ending of your own life story. Sure. So, um, you know, um, I've always thought the obituary writers, when I worked at a, an old school newspaper, uh, had a very serious job. And that was to tell uh, a, a deceased person's very, very last story right. and the thing that would go on and, and be remembered. And so that's at least what my intent was setting out when I decided that I was going to try and write these stories. But they're, <laughs> they're hard and they're crazy and they're depressing. And, um, and the weirdest thing about it, I've never been to it, but there's a crime con where um, the same as people go <laughs> who Comic-Con. go to yes, exactly. There's crime uh. con with crime podcasters. And what the fuck do you Nancy go? Do you dress Grace. up as Scott Peterson? What the fuck do you do? Uh, you <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't dress up, but they uh, they talk to Nancy Grace. Uh, they talk oh. to all those people. Oh. Yeah, I I have not gone. I've never gone to it. Um, that it, woman. It, that woman is a shrew, and her people were the spawn <laughs> yeah. of the devil. Like I swear, they they hounded yeah. me. They hounded me, like. They handed me to get on that fucking show all the time. And I remember the seventh, eighth time they called me. They said, well, well, well why are you just doing Drew's show? You're not doing anybody else's. And I said, well, number one, I don't like you people. <laughs> the only reason I'm doing Drew's is because I liked him from back in the day. And mm-hmm. they asked me to come back on a comment on the trial. I go, but like, I've seen your show. 
I don't like Nancy Grace. And I don't like Jane mm-hmm. Velez Mitchell. I don't like those people. Me either. You know, they're yeah. just they're just vile, nasty people. And they don't um, not that I, you know, wanted any respect, but I just didn't want to get on a show to fight. You know, it's like I didn't want to get on the show to fight and argue. It's like, look, I'm gonna say my thing. Let me say my thing and split. You know, I'm not gonna have you mm-hmm. yell at me. And the couple of shrinks that I had try to like combat me, or a couple of lawyers that I had try to combat me, I kicked their fucking ass. And I had no, <laughs> and it's on you. YouTube. So neener, neener. You can go see for <laughs> yourself. I just did not care who they thought they were. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it was always about dragging it back to this prurient bullshit. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't about the, the things that she said that I thought was strange that made sense when he turned up dead. I'm like, okay, she did it. Why did I know that? That's your story. Not whether or not mm-hmm. I fucked her. Not whether or not there was an allure. Remember this one redheaded shrink that drive me crazy. It wasn't Cheryl. What's her face? She's I think I know who you're talking about. Her uh, uh, Rose, I think, is her last name. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and redhead, real yeah. cute girl, annoying as fuck. And <laughs> I remember the first time she tried to like submarine me. You know, she's like, "Well, was there like an allure?" And I'm like, "What the fuck allure?" I'm like, you know, I don't know if I got bleeped out or not. I was just like, I was 43. She was 26. She had a great ass. There's your lure. Next question. This isn't about that. This isn't some team mm-hmm. beat cover boy bullshit. A guy got killed. That's mm-hmm. what we're talking about here. Not whether or not I, I, I knew that she liked tapioca pudding. You know, <laughs> that was, that's, right? you, know, that, you know what I mean? That's, that's what made mm-hmm. me kind of mad about, about that environment. And, and what was funny is when they first came on that show, they were actually pretty cool. And, and they're trying to present a sober kind of a, a, a cogent worldview point of view of, of all this kind of shit. Mm-hmm. As it moved on and the numbers got better, then they got weird. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple people that asked me if I had fucked her. And I said, no, I did not. Well, could you say it? And I'm kind of going, you know, that shit bites you in the ass. And I don't, and I said this to the one of the people, I said, I don't know if you know this. She's sitting in county jail right now. She's got access. And so far, I've been, I've been hanging out with y'all for about a couple of months now. And she hasn't said one word to dispute what I'm saying. Because I'm not lying. Tell the truth. Mm-hmm. And, and she's a murderer and an asshole. But, you know, to her credit, she's not trying to disavow anything that I'm saying about her yeah. character or about what she told me. Because she knows what she told me. But if I say I fucked her, it's over. Because that's a lie. And that's how the shit bites you in the ass. And what does it even do for them and their programming, though? It doesn't. Like, it doesn't. it doesn't do anything. See, but and, and no offense, no, no yeah. offense to you, but this is most no, no. of the me- this is most of the media. C minus brains with dubious ethics. Mm-hmm. It truly is. It's a it's about the careers thing. It's about you know building the next step. It's about you know like you, you don't give a shit if 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 Biden's a rapist or not. You know now it's fuck the Me Too movement and and we're on to the next thing. You know and now we don't care that Trump's a pussy grabber and has twenty odd assault cases against him. <laughs> Because and I had a, I had somebody defend this to me with a straight face a few weeks back. Well, Biden's only in the single digits. <laughs> I was like, whoa, uh, uh, that's that that's super duper good times. Like mm-hmm. so, so now we're now we're 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 at the lesser of two, the, the the evil of two lessers on a regular basis now, and this is and this is the same kind of thing with this with this world with these people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it, and, and and they're more interested in the purient shit. They're not interested in anything that really happened. Mm-mm. you know and no and it all goes back to like just the simplest i don't even want to throw out the word abortion but that's the what it goes back to it's just the one or two issues that people care about and that they decide that those are the um things that you know they'll overlook every single every everything else for well yeah i wrote yeah. A, i wrote i wrote an article for texas free press a few weeks back called gays guns and abortion that very same thing there's one party and the two sort of sides manipulate you with gays, guns, and abortion. They take mm-hmm. money from the exact same places except the NRA. Mm-hmm. But they take money from the exact same fucking places. The banks, big pharma, defense, they take money from the exact same places. Why is it that Nancy Pelosi is writing these bills during a coronavirus that sort of, sort of, kind of, sort of ape the Republican shit? And then the, Republican take, the Republicans take that and they're going left at the Democrats. Mm-hmm. Now they're talking about a UBI. Now they're talking about Medicare for all. They're at least covering COVID. And Nancy Pelosi's like, well, we're going to subsidize COBRA. Mm. You know, like, <laughs> okay, di- okay, okay, House Speaker dipshit. Th- this, and this is the kind of thing where it's all been reduced. 
and this is why this crime business trips me out. It's all been reduced to this um, ESPN level uh, cheering section. Like you said, you, you, you know, um, you've had, you've good versus flack. evil. Yeah, yeah. You've gotten flack for, you know, whatever it's like, um, you know, I mean, people took sides with her mm-hmm. and, you know, they'd get online and, you know, they, they'd find me on Twitter or whatever. And this is like when I saw my pages open because I didn't know any better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, and they would say the most like, ig- A, ignorant, because I'm not Jewish. B, just hateful, racist shit. They go, you're a fat, bald Jew. And I heard that all the time, that I was a fat, bald Jew. And I'm like, okay, I know I go by Abe. My real name's not Abe. It's a nickname. But the last name, Abdul Hadi. If you think that's Jewish, well, then we need to take you to a school and beat the (laughs) shit out of you because you clearly don't know what a Jewish name is, all right? It's like, yeah, Goldstein, Abdul Hadi. They're all the same. I don't know. It's like- And how does he even go back to that? It's this crazy. And for women, it it becomes, the the threats online become, I'm going to rape you. I'm going to- Yeah. uh, Yeah. I'm going to murder you. I'm going to kill your children. It's like such disgusting shit. And, uh, cool. you know, and, and you know what's, uh, th- this is what drives me crazy when I read that shit and I read about that is like, how the fuck do you even think to say that to another human being? I know, I know. I, I, I over I, that, over somebody you don't know, by the way, who mm-hmm. probably murdered somebody. I know, right? Like, yeah, like, it, it, it's it, it's just most people are stupid. Hmm. You're a new mother, so I'm not going to, you know, bum you out too bad. But most people are stupid. Yeah, eighty percent of them are stupid, and they behave like this on a right re- on the regular. That's my only goal in life is to raise a, a human uh, son that uh, does not um, <laughs> uh, does does not take out one pain that a, a female caused him on the next person in his right. life. Like, you know, like raise a good person and treat people, you know, the golden rule, how you want to be treated. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But back to gold, back, back to Jody Arias just for yeah. one second. Cause yeah. one question I would just love to ask, uh, looking back on the entire thing, I, you know, I got swept up into a tornado of, this chaos, um, you know, and, uh, and, you know, it worked out well because, th- th- you know, I wasn't personally involved and I was just trying to be an author and it helped, you know, elevate my career. Um, and, you know, I still, I, I didn't feel good about it. I didn't feel like I was, I wanted to profit off of the dead. Uh, I felt like, um, you know, I was going to make the most of this opportunity that I had, uh, but I wasn't going to do it in a way that I couldn't sleep at night. Um, and I don't think that you should have any reason not to sleep well at night, but looking back, do you have any regrets? Um, well, 13 was a shitty year cause, uh, you know, the trial thing happened. And then in March of that year, one of my best friends got Lou Gehrig's disease or got diagnosed with Lou mm. Gehrig's disease and he died in December of that year. So it was, it was not a great year. Um, if my I had dog died during the, my, I mean, it's not the same thing at all, but my, my beloved dog since that I had since the day we, I, I married my husband died uh, on April 13th during the middle of the Jodi Arias trial. And then my grandmother died one month later. So I remember it being just a very sad time for me too. Yeah, no, I mean, if, if I had it to do over, I would have just waited until I got called to testify. And then just, I would have left it at that. I wouldn't have done the show, um, you know, but, but, you know, um, my friend was really beating the bushes, trying to get us all to get out to do something, you know, and I kept saying, no, no, no. She would call me. Hey, how do you feel about, you know, uh, Dancy Grace? Fuck her. How do you feel about, you know, Piers yeah. Morgan? Fuck him. You know, and then, and then when I finally got the Drew thing, I was like, all right, cool. I'll go. That's cool. He's cool. I'll have a bash. That's fine. But then, um, but then all these people kind of descended on me, not just through my friend, but now they started calling me personally. And then, and, and that, that wasn't the part that bothered me. The, 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 I think what it was is I'm already kind of a cynic anyway, right? So, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't mean I'm not romantic. It just means that I, I just don't have any faith in people. So it got worse. I saw the worst of people with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw people that I knew that, you know, couldn't find a camera fast enough, got on every fucking show, right? more than a few, right? And that bummed me out. And then people that I knew personally who, you know, were supposed to be, you know, like personally developed in that shit, you know, and they're supposed to be like, you know, all Tony Robbins and everything. 
suddenly they were so, so, suddenly they were impressed with this shit and they'd see me and they go oh hey man saw you on tv you're like a star now and i'm like whoa okay you do know that i didn't get to play the ex-boyfriend of jennifer anderson in the friends reunion movie, <laughs> right 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 yeah. this is a murder thing this isn't you know i'm, I'm like about a step above kato kalen because i got 10 iq points <laughs> higher that's it that's it and right. you know and 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 but if i had it to do over i wouldn't have done it at all i, I would have um you know, it, like I remember when I testified in the second trial, or the the the, the penalty phase, um, mm-hmm. uh, Wilmot because Nermi was such a cocksucker, yeah. he didn't want to talk to me at all. So he 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 had her, he sicked her on me, thinking I was going to be nice to her, and I wasn't. And so, one of the things that happened in the in the hearing was she said, you know, she goes, "Well, I, I hear you had you had a, a novel coming out this year, and you know, you 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 do stand up comedy." I'm like, "Yeah." And she goes, well, has this helped that at all? I said, no. Like I told you, I go, I haven't done a single joke about this. Uh, I've been writing a blog for three years at that point. I had like 30,000 views for basically an essays blog, which were like 1,500 to 2,500 word essays that I was putting out every Monday for a year as a project. Not one time, except for, the, except for about six months after the thing was over, I put out a little, this is the kind of society we live in, talking about this, this deal without even talking about my involvement in it, right? Um, mm-hmm. but I go, like, I didn't do a single joke. I didn't, my novel's not about this. Um, no, I haven't benefited. This didn't help my, this didn't help my business. You know, I don't think, I don't think I said, I sold, a, I don't think I sold a single thing because of this, you know? And so it no, just, no one saw that case and said, I need to sign up for prepaid legal. <laughs> right. Right. So I was just sort of going, all right, well, fuck. I mean, you know, so but she's trying to make it about that. I'm like, it didn't work out for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're probably gonna make more money off of this than I am. And then, and then, you know, and then the, the, she moved on to her next question. And, and I just went back to yes, no, yes, no answers, right? Um, and that was specifically a, a Juan Martinez direction. You know, he was like, listen, you say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Unless, and I'm quoting him now, unless you can cut her fucking throat. If you can't cut her fucking throat, don't deviate from yes, no. It's yes, no, hands folded in front of you. Don't look like a crazy person. But if you can hmm. cut her throat, cut her fucking throat on. Okay, cool. And that was my little direction. But, um, but no, man, it was just like, it, it just was, you know, if I had it to do over again, I, I just would have waited for the trial and I wouldn't have done this, you know, and I would have told my friends, listen, I get what you're trying to get. I, I get it. You know, cause I mean, there's another guy who I really like a lot. Um, I won't name him, uh, cause it's his business, but him and his wife, excuse me, didn't get involved in any of this. And then you Travis really well. And they didn't get involved until the very, very, very end. Very, very end. They finally kind of got on Dr. Drew a few times. And that was it. You know, they were chased around like, like everybody. And they, they just, and they didn't do it. Um, and they didn't even testify in any, any of the trials either. Right. Hmm. But um, I wish That's I had done it. I wish I had done it that way or, or not done it at all. And then just showed up to the trial because I was very comfortable talking to Martinez. I was, it was a few years at that point, <clears throat> you know, so I was very comfortable talking to him. I trusted him. I was going to do a good job, you know, and I didn't think he was an asshole. Um, contrary to what people will say, but, um, you know, I just, I just, that's my only real thing. Um, just, you know, looking back on it, you know, the, the kind of toll it took a little bit, you know, um, that was it. I, and I think people were fascinated with it just because it was like, and one of the producers let this slip to me that, that, that when I would come on the show, the numbers would go up. Hmm. And my theory about that is that I was basically the guy that sounds like you when you scream at the TV. So people would see one of these shrinks or one of these attorneys say something asinine. Mm-hmm. And they're screaming at the TV, but they're basically lip syncing to what I'm saying already. <laughs> right because they would love to say oh, are you out of your fucking mind they would love to say that right are you out of your mm-hmm. mind like they would love to say that and because i didn't care because <laughs> you know i wasn't going to get a show out of this i was like my whole thing was all right it's like 25 minutes from my house they're right across the street from C- uh, amoeba records when there wasn't amoeba records and mm-hmm. so i would go down there and i'd go to amoeba records buy some vinyl go up the street have a couple of beers you know i had validated parking <laughs> and i'd go back to the mm-hmm. car and go home um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was something I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't do it again. And, and then, and then seeing what the Dr. Drew show turned into because of that, mm-hmm. um, 
it it just it was kind of, it was just the whole thing was just really disappointing and it just it didn't really um leave me with a good taste of human nature to be honest with you well to get real f- philosophical about life before you know we wrap it up um you know the we're kind of in a weird way we're all on the titanic we're all on the same sinking ship <laughs> just depends on what time you you leave this world and the only thing we have, the only commodity that's actually worth anything, not money, is time. And uh, and Jody is now going to spend the rest of her time, the rest of her life, doing nothing and sitting in a jail cell all day. And at least, you know, at Travis dying at 30, he did something with his life. He did something that has accomplishments. And, um, you know, if, if that case taught me anything, it taught me to live life to the fullest like he did. I mean, he, he wasn't perfect, but he tried to make an impression in this world and tried to, um, you know, uh, to leave a it, it bet, to be a positive influence and to leave the world a better place than than how he came into it. Yeah, and see, Jody but, but, did the opposite. See, but to your point though, and this is the thing that pisses me off about most people, is that they got to make it a black and white thing. That's true. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like it's like you know, it's like okay, so if you saw Travis speak or or whatever, and you were affected by his thing or whatever, okay, so why does it matter? Mm-hmm. If he maybe had some bad judgment or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or didn't behave. I mean, he was, a, he, he was, he was dead at 30. Mm-hmm. You know what I was doing at 30? I was doing a fuck ton of acid. I was playing in a band. <laughs> okay. I wasn't mm-hmm. making the money he was making. I was working at a record company and then that, you know, got laid off the second record company job and, you know, and, and was in grad school playing in a band doing a fuck ton of drugs. What kind of a positive impact did I have on anybody's life? I don't know. We played a lot of great shows. You know, maybe somebody got laid that night. Good for them. But I mean, you know, but, but to sit there and, and reduce it to this American you, exception. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's American I totally exception. Get it. we, we do that whole good guy, bad guy thing all the time. And it, it, it drives me fucking bananas because I'm sitting there going, well, wait a minute, man. Like the guy's life had value. Mm-hmm. Regardless well, of well it, it's the whole thing of the whole true crime genre in general is the good versus evil the the good guy winning the prosecutor you know getting the conviction the bad guy going to jail justice the whole system becomes very very black and white but still you know you can't deny that now uh you know i i just me personally have recently going through the experience of motherhood having an 11 month old and i had to have that life experience and knowing that she'll never have any of that um you know she ruined her own life 100 percent. no no it, it just the other tragedy of that though is you, you destroy two families yeah you know because she may as well be dead you know, mm-hmm. I mean, her, 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 her parents are elderly. They live in Northern California, right? Her dad actually has died. Okay. He did die. Okay. So yeah. I he he, did, he did die of cancer. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, it, you know, cancer probably brought on by all this shit, you know, so mm-hmm. it, who knows, but, but that he was, he, he had it when it was happening, but yeah, he, he, he ended up passing, uh, and she tried to get out and, uh, for the funeral, but did not was, was not successful. Okay. Well, I mean, and that, and that, you know, that sucks, but that's life. You killed, you killed a guy. Yeah. And it shit happens mm-hmm. when you kill a guy, right? And and this is mm-hmm. the thing that, we, and, and and you know, kind of wrapping up. We got a few minutes here. This is the thing that kind of, excuse me, um, in your line of work, because I've I, you know, because I've made friends with some of these people that I was on that show with, right? Mm-hmm. I reached out to different, different attorneys and different shrinks, <clears throat> and they flat out would tell me. I, 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 I and before I was like, I remember two a couple of years back, year and a half ago, I talked to this one attorney, and I said, "Hey, listen, I want to have you come on and talk about." you know, I had this big esoteric law thing. And she mm-hmm. goes, well, I'd really rather come on and talk about your experience with the Jody Arias thing. And I said, I'd rather not. And she goes, well, I can't really come and talk about what you want to talk about. I said, well, why? She goes, <laughs> she goes I'll lose Twitter followers. And I'm like, what? She goes, dude, she goes, I put, I put an anti-Hillary thing. And it wasn't even anti. It was just, I don't like Hillary Clinton. And I lost like 600 Twitter followers in a day. Wow. And she goes, and that's my that's my bread and butter. Cause I get on these shows that promotes my practice, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, well, I can appreciate your position, but I don't want to talk about it. You know, and mm-hmm. at the time I didn't want to, and now I kind of don't care, you know, and, and maybe because maybe because I'm closer to my own mortality. I don't know. Cause I'm, you know, I'm 56 well, next just, week. I'm 81. 
I don't know. I mean, I, like, but I just, I, I, that's just where I'm at with it. I just, you know. This was just a crazy life experience you had. And I think you handled it with grace and dignity and, um, you know, and tried to do the, the best uh, version of you you could with it. And I think it's cool that you decided to just talk about it now. Well, you know, I, I, wanted, I, I, wanted, I wanted to have you come on and, you know, and, and then it came up and then uh, a couple weeks back, I interviewed a sexual uh, sex, uh, sex abuse child therapist and mm-hmm. or child sex abuse therapist. And, and it, it was a, not even a, a couple of minutes, but it came up on accident. Cause it, you know, she's talking about, you know, like mass stuff or whatever, people's reactions to things. And I, I said, yeah, you know, and I, I casually mentioned that I was in this murder trial a few years back. She goes, well, you're, you know, you're not going to get away with that. What, the, what was that about? And <laughs> she chased me down the rabbit hole a little bit. And then once I said it and came out, I was like, ah, okay. You know, and then, and I've been toying with you coming on the show for a while, but I, I didn't want to, because I wanted to, I, I just wanted to avoid this. Mm-hmm. And so kind of like the lawyer, I did it. you know, so mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, but it, I mean, you know, we could have talked about all your books or whatever. I just, I was kind of letting, I was just kind of, I was just cool to let it zen it out and do its thing. And, I, you know. I didn't really have any interest in promoting myself or my books or being opportunistic. I, I just wanted to have an interesting conversation with you today. So I think this was a very interesting conversation. And I'm really glad we got to talk. Well, I'm glad too. I'm sorry. I think I yacked more than you did, which you know sort of no. violates, violates my purpose for this whole thing. But, uh, no, 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 not at all. Well, listen. Let's uh, let's just start putting it to bed. But um, is there anything okay. you want to? Is there anything you want to? Which what's the name of your next book? When is it coming out? Um, right now, uh, the titles get changed all the time, and like right now, it's on it's on hold. Um, but it's called The Brothers tentatively. So, okay. but I'm not I'm not even interested in that. Like right now, just I get it. I'm. Taking a taking a year doing the mom thing. Um, my son turns a year on June 9th, and then Ugh. I'm gonna kind of move back into that career <laughs> nice. status and see what I do next. All right, all right. Well, hey, listen, let me start wrapping it up here. Hey, uh, guys, our our okay. guest has been Shanna Hogan. Thank and, you so much. Um, thank you for having. Have, thank you for coming on. Um, and uh, she's uh, written several books as we talked about. And again, you can find her online. I'm going to have some of her links in the body of the interview. And again, patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. And if this stuff makes you uncomfortable, it's supposed to sleep tight. 